this massive gap will be eliminated to look like this. And these long and narrow gaps will be eliminated so the living hinge looks like this. But when we switch to a case with a deep base, we will get these small gaps. So we will get rid of these as well. Look at the smooth living hinge surface. So to start, let's get our tools ready. We'll grab some tough PLA. It is easy to 3D print and the orange color will make it easier to see the hinge details. And we'll need some cheetah. It's very flexible and will make many of the hinges functional. And we'll also need Fusion 360 to design our hinges. Then Prusa Slicer to convert our models to G-code. And our modified Maker Gear M2 with the Mosquito Hotend to turn the G-code into real parts. Lastly, don't forget the digital calipers, a designer's best friend. Now if you look at around at your household items, you will notice that the injection molded plastic living hinges are small. So let's start with a small hinge. We'll use standard settings, slice the file and export the G-code. And look at that, the hinge extrusions are printed in mid-air, they don't even contact each other. Look at that massive gap in the hinge. Thankfully the fix is really simple. We just need to trick the slicing software to force the extrusions along the hinge direction. So we need to go to the print settings tab, layers and perimeter sections, and then vertical shells section. And we'll change the perimeter count to 2, slice the file, and unfortunately the inflow pattern looks almost identical. But what if we change the perimeter count to 1? So let's slice the file, and look at that, all extrusion lines are along the hinge, just like we want them. All extrusion lines are making good contact with the case walls. So let's export the G-code and head over to the printer. And looking at the hinge printing, the extrusions are staying where they are printed. And the printed case looks great. We got rid of the massive gap just by changing to perimeter count of 1. However, one perimeter count does make the surface finish worse. Now let's look at the plastic living hinge from the top and there are small gaps. Honestly, it's not a big deal. The hinge will still work with the gaps in this direction. It is actually similar to intentionally adding gaps. But we don't want these gaps, so how do we get rid of them? Let's go to the print settings tab and then the advanced section and then the flow section. And we'll increase the bridge flow ratio to 1.25 and all of the small gaps are gone. So let's go ahead and close the case and see how the hinge works. And unfortunately the hinge breaks because the tough PLA is still too stiff for this design. So instead we will use a flexible material cheetah. And as we can see it works great. But if we zoom in we can see that the hinge lifts up the case in the back. And this is because the hinge is flush to the separation line leaving no room for the hinge to bend. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the hinge slightly below the split line and now the case fully closes. But what if you need a longer hinge to get a larger bend radius? Let's print the case with a slightly longer hinge. And unfortunately the gaps reappeared on this hinge. In fact there are more gaps and they are longer than compared to the case with the shorter hinge. You can even really see the extrusions necking down. And if we measure the thickness, it's actually 0.48 millimeters, which is a lot more than 0.2 millimeters nominal that we have in our CAD. So to eliminate the gaps, we will need to do several things. First, we'll increase the nominal thickness to 0.3 millimeters in the model. This will make the nominal dimension closer to the actual dimension when we print the part. So going back to Prusa Slicer, let's slice the updated model. And we'll just double check the hinge thickness using the slider and it, unfortunately it's still 0.2 millimeters. So we changed the thickness in the model but it had no impact on the sliced part. So we'll go to the print settings tab, then layers and perimeter section, and then layer height. And we'll increase the layer height to 0.3 millimeters. Second, we need to add supports to keep the hinge from sagging. So let's print the case with the supports and look for gaps in the hinge. And thankfully the gaps are gone, but the supports are hard to remove. And unfortunately we can't pull the supports too hard, otherwise the hinge will break. And that's what ended up happening when I tried to remove the supports. So let's go back to the slicer and change the support material settings. Go into the print settings tab, then the support material section, then the options for support material and raft section. Then to the top contact Z distance and we'll increase it to 0.4 millimeters. Looks like this worked pretty well. The support separated from the hinge pretty easily. And the hinge surface looks pretty clean. But we do have an issue with the support base fusing to the case wall. 
which meant I had to gently break away the support from the case first. So to solve this, we'll need to increase the XY separation between an object and its support to 0.5 millimeters, and the supports no longer touch the base. However, there is not a lot of room to grab the supports with pliers. I even damaged the hinge once. So we'll increase the pattern spacing to 5 millimeters, and the results are great. Lots of room to grip the supports with the pliers, and the supports peel away easily from the hinge, and the hinge surface looks great. So we'll grab our calipers, and unfortunately the hinge thickness is 0.47 millimeters thick, which is significantly more than 0.3 millimeters. But we'll go ahead and test to see how the hinge works. We close the case and snap the hinge bricks again. Unfortunately, tough PLA is still too stiff, even though the hinge bend radius is larger than earlier. And so we'll just switch to Cheetah, and just as expected, the Cheetah hinge is working great. So far we looked at simple cases where the base and the lid are the same height, but in the real world we probably will want a deep base and a shallow lid. So how do you print this case? If we print it in the same orientation we will need a lot of support material. In this example it will take 13 minutes or 25% of the total printing time to print the supports. So another option is to print the case on the side. Let's give it a try. And when we do, the total printing time decreased to 46 minutes from 54 minutes, or 15% decrease. And the support printing time decreased to 2 minutes from 13 minutes. And the material waste for supports also decreased to 0.23 grams from 2.4 grams. That's a 90% reduction in material waste. But before we start 3D printing the new case, we'll change the fillets to chamfers on the corners. This will make it easier to 3D print and improve surface finish on the corners. Now let's get the case printed. But we ran into a major problem. The surface finish on the hinge is very rough. In fact, it looks horrible. One, the hinge surface is noticeably worse than the case surface itself. So there is something going on when the hinge is being printed. Two, the surface imperfections are not completely random, they seem to form in clusters. So let's print the hinge again and closely watch how the hinge is being printed. It's kind of hard to see, especially on camera, so you need to look closely, but watch this. At first the hinge looks pretty smooth when the nozzle lays down the extrusion, but several blobs appear on the hinge when the nozzle comes back and travels over the hinge. And if we go back to Prusa Slicer and turn on Travel Moves, we can see that the nozzle always travels across the entire length of the hinge, ruining the hinge. Thankfully, this is really easy to solve. Let's go to the Print Settings tab, Layers and Perimeter section, then the Quality section. And we'll turn off Avoid Crossing Perimeter feature. Let's slice the file and look at that. All of the travel moves between the two case halves occur away from the hinge. Let's look at how these are actually printed, and yes, the nozzle no longer travels across the hinge. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. The hinge surface is now smooth. But if we zoom in, we can see small gaps that appeared on the hinge. Notice that all of them are on the left side and almost at the case boundary. So let's go back to the Prusa slicer to see if we can figure out what's going on. Zooming into the left side of the hinge and advancing by one code line at a time, we can see that the extrusion start on the left side and goes to the right. And if we turn on the detraction, we can see that this is true for all of the layers. And spot checking different layers confirms this, which means we need to adjust our retraction settings. This time we'll head over to the printer settings tab, then extruder 1 section, then retraction section, and finally to extra length on restart. Currently set to negative 0.05 millimeters and it will increase it by a small amount to 0 millimeters, which means it will extrude a little more material after every extraction compared to earlier. So let's slice, export G-code, and 3D print the part. And the hinge looks amazing. All of the gaps are gone, so let's measure the hinge thickness in the middle, and it comes out to be 0.38 millimeters. And now on the left side of the hinge, and it's 0.52 millimeters. So the start of the hinge is a little thicker than in the middle, but the small amount of widening at the edge is actually good. It will help absorb the higher stresses at the joint. So now you might be asking yourself, how do I design a 3D printed plastic living hinge that lasts for many, many cycles? If yes, then watch this video next. 